<laughs> you, you are but a feather in my arms. No, I am merely tired due to being unable to run for some time. You do not hinder me, soft heart. In fact, you sit quite comfortably in my arms. If we were to run side by side, I doubt we would have gotten far. As slow as you are. You admit yourself it would take all night to approach this town. We have made it in a few spare hours. <sighs> Though it is deep in the night, the light spreads across the land like day trapped within the walls of these large dwellings. No trees to seek comfort in. Only the twisted, grotesque mimics of wood and stone. Ah, yes. Buildings. Awful. Will I fit in them? I'd sooner rather smash them to dust but yes, if you insist I must, I can with some changes. Do not worry. Come, you look tired. We must find you a place to rest. Hmm. <clears throat> Managed to get that last creature out safely. Good. That makes what? 20, 25, something like that. It's a pretty big haul, even for a network like this one. Tends to be those black market types try not to keep so many monsters in a single location, just in case something like this happens. We got any idea how many dead? Eh, well, I'd be slightly more sympathetic if I didn't know what these assholes were getting paid. As it turns out, smuggling monsters is pretty fucking lucrative. They get paid more than we do, at least. And you said there was no sign of the madam, or any of her family? Not even her oldest kid. Apparently they returned home after being away for a couple of years. Huh? Yeah, I know him. Know this place pretty well too. Though I never got to see the basement. Guess we found out the reason why I was never allowed in here. Or why they never asked me over for the holidays after I became an investigator. <laughs> yeah. I grew up with the kids here. About the same age as the one who's missing. Well, maybe just a little older. Worried. I guess you could say that. I wouldn't be surprised if I already knew who opened those cages. The madam's always been the type to make the skin prickle. But her kids ain't that bad. For the most part. The one I have in mind especially. A real soft, bleeding heart type. <laughs> I remember, they used to keep strays of all kind, and not even just the cute ones. I'm sure it was a shock to them, if they managed to come across this scene. Monsters locked up in cages, getting ready to get sold to the elite. But they wouldn't have run away. 
Not like this. <sighs> Fuck. Just wish I knew why they didn't come to me for help. That damn idiot kid. It was always such a strange mix of brave and too damn honest for their own good. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. After all these years, I finally get to see the basement of this place. Uh, and I tell ya, it is not living up to expectations. <sighs> what a fucking bloodbath. Starting to wonder if my guess is wrong. I don't think the kid I knew would have allowed this to happen. Nah, I don't think any of those monsters could have gotten out by themselves. Look, none of these cages are tampered with. Seemed like they're all opened on purpose. No force in the locks or nothing. Anything that you can see that's different to the rest? Any leads at all? Think you found something interesting, huh? Great. There's one thing I love, it's things that are interesting at crime scenes. <sighs> Show me. Oh. Well, damn, Constable. You weren't wrong. This is interesting. All the other bodies just got ripped apart by a surge of monsters. That much is obvious. But this one... Shit. Looks like half his face was left on the bars. Sure, he's missing an arm or two, but don't exactly track with the rest. Shit. This sure is a hell of a big birdcage. Bigger than the rest here. Uh, let's see. We can't get a feel for things. Hey, shut up, will ya? Doing something here. I can't tell exactly what it is. This space feels cramped, filled. This creature must have been large. Smells fresh, too. Not from around this town. Far, where the air is cleaner. Mountains? Forest, maybe. Uh, it's a clever thing, too. The space echoes with words. Human speech. It could. It was communicating. Uh, damn it. Hmm? What? Ah, nothing. Just a little magic trick. Don't fuss over it. <laughs> Famous, am I? What? For just a little bit of investigation magic? I'm sure they never talk about how it gives me a splitting headache. You think that's something? You should meet the real magic users on the force. This is a fucking parlor trick compared to what they can do. But it gives us a little bit of something to go on. And puts me back to my original suspicions. If this monster here could communicate to that damn fool friend of mine, well, I'm pretty sure they'd be easily convinced to open a cage. Or two. Or twenty-five. I'm sure they didn't know that letting the others out would lead to this. <sighs> Fuck. Okay. We're turning this place upside down. This was meant to be an auction, so somebody rustle me up some papers. I can only hope the panic was strong enough that they left ledgers, receipts, documents, anything of value. But first of all, I want to know what was in this cage. Then, I want to know who these creatures were being sold to, how many were obtained, 
and I want to know everything, and I mean everything we can, about the madam's practice. Everybody gotta move fast, otherwise we're gonna lose this lead, and gods be damned, we need anything we can get right now. Evidence is imperative for this case. Everybody move. <sighs> Damn it, kid. I don't know what the hell you've hooked your wagon to, but it can't be any good. I just hope you know what the hell you're doing. No, I do not wish to. I refuse. Why must I? It is no matter to me if your brethren are displeased with this form. I have changed it to look as your kind look, as you requested. Can you not see how small I am? Well, no. Not quite as small as you. Why would I want to be as small as you? Hmm, to blend in. I have changed to suit your desire. But now you tell me I must cover this form. I know you appreciate the shape I have taken. I can see how you look at it. Hmm? I care not for your... Trousers. This restricts me. I cannot move as I wish to. I cannot hunt. <sighs> of course I will hunt. I hunger, and so I will hunt. Granted, these hands are not made to rip and tear as my own. <sighs> Perhaps instead of covering my form, you should uncover yours. I believe you would be even more appealing without this cloth. You've changed color. I did not know humans could do such a thing. Are you trying to blend into your surroundings? Can humans do that? Perhaps if your kind can, I will not have to. I do not wish. Yes, however. Fine. If I am to wear this cloth and restrict myself, will you cease this noise? I will do as you say, but only for now. I trust you to understand this place better than I, but I will not enjoy it. Do not mistake this as a victory. Do not believe you have sway over me, soft heart. You belong to me. I do not take orders from you. You are mine to command and control. However, a wise creature knows when they must take advice. Fine. Give me those trousers. And show me how they function, huh? Hello, everyone. It is me, the Stroke of Midnight, Mazarus. I want to give a huge shout out to Random Jumble, who not only created the artwork for this, but also created the script. 
and she did an amazing job on all of it. Thank you so much for listening to this, and also a huge shout out to someone who, at this point, does not need to be shouted out. Uh, Ramble VA. Holy crap. What a performance from him. Thank you so much for being involved in this audio. And considering that this is going to be an ongoing series, he and I will be collaborating on the series going backward and forwards. You can find his version on his channel, which I'm sure you probably already have heard, and you'll see the difference in what we do, uh, the different annotations, how we act is going to be wildly different on each other's channel, so I cannot wait to hear back from uh, you all to which ones you preferred, or if you enjoyed both interpretations. It's rare that we get to see an actor actively do something completely different, or actively work with someone on the same kind of thing and give different kind of perspectives on characters and creatures. I absolutely adore this as an idea. In the meantime, I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon subscribers who have helped me this entire year with getting my scripts off the ground. You guys are amazing. Uh, I know the year 2024 is obviously got a lot to look forward to. So again, I look very much forward to seeing how everything goes. So starting with Autumn Candy, AC, Celeste Doni. Yeah, it's Jin. Scott Henez. Ropax. Yu Yu Hart. Catherine Taylor. Bookworm Heather. Cal. Lou Duck. Elvin Semi. Mallory Zadell. JYMMA. First Guard. Echo. Trine Eggenbritzen. Collector of Dead Tree Corpses. Irrelevant Listener, Jack Edgar, The Demon Queen Aaron, Crystal Moreno, Ardent Melody, Marlin, Yokai, Kate R., Francois Canal, Wanderer Rowan, Hypnos, Rockstar Pancake Cat, Janice Kofi, Piney, Random Jumbo, Mac, Grammy, Not Music, Oz Yuki, Tierra, Cry Wolf 883, Danny Capricorn, Dr. True, Zero Key Wolf, Jamie Lay Neal, Patrick Cyborg, Tori David, Aurelie Orgasmic, and Nikki Tupin's Inky Horror. As you can see, that was a lot of names, and you could be added on there. Um, obviously, uh, this was not ordered like I normally have it, but hey, whatever works. Thank you all so very much. You guys are amazing. This was a fun audio to put together. So much fun working with Ramble. Um, and for those of you who are interested, you guys can always go on to my Patreon and get the audio early. You can get it almost as early as two weeks. In this case, it might actually be a little later than that because of all the editing involved. But don't worry, you'll usually get it before YouTube ever sees it. In the meantime, I want to thank you all so very much again for your time. Be, f be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell. And as always, sweet dreams and pleasant nightmares.